Hey guys, welcome to the first video of my upcoming Sidra tutorial series. In this video, I would like to run you through how to set up a basic intersection model using Sidra 9. Without further ado, let's get into it. So you first need an aerial image of the intersection you're trying to model. And ideally, this should also allow you to take a few measurements. Google Map will do just fine. So in Sidra, you will notice that there are a few intersection options at the top. Today, we're just going to model a simple roundabout. So we're going to go ahead and pick the roundabout unsignalized one lane option. Sidra will then spit out a very basic roundabout model. We'll then have to change a few numbers here and there to make the model represent our roundabout. So we'll start from the top to the bottom. The first tab is the intersection tab. This is where you put in the basic information for this site. The site name is generally all the road names together. And then you will also put in the road name for each of the leg in the intersection. As for leg geometry, each of this leg has an exit and an entry, so there's nothing to change there. So the next thing to focus on would be the approach distance. I generally take this distance as the longest distance because we'll be able to queue without causing a pain to anyone else. This is generally the free flow distance. So for this leg, I'll start measuring from the giveaway line and all the way to where it crosses a main road. And now go ahead and enter an approximate number into the approach distance. And then we'll repeat these for the other few legs. Notice that the default is 500 meters. So if I'm getting more than 500 meters, I'll just leave it as the default 500. So that's the approach distance done for each of the leg. Next, we'll move on to the movement definition tab. As the name suggests, this is where you would define the movements that are allowed in the model, as well as the vehicle classes. In Sidra, the default is light vehicle and heavy vehicle. And the origin and destination movement tab will allow you to define which movement are allowed from one leg to another. We'll come back to this tab in more detail later on. So moving on to lane geometry. In this tab, the focus will be to get all the lane lengths correct. And we have already done this when we put in the approach distance in the intersection tab. There are also usually short lanes and turn pocket, which we'll have to measure. But since this roundabout doesn't have any of those, we don't have to worry about them. The next thing to do will be to measure the lane widths in each leg and input that into Sidra. The Lane Discipline tab will allow you to assign movement to different lanes within the same approach. But this doesn't really matter since we only have one lane in each approach at the moment. But you can turn off a movement by unclicking them. So in this case, the left turn from each approach has been banned. But since they are allowed, we'll just put it back in again. And that's Lane Geometry done. The next important tab to look at for Roundabout is the Roundabout tab. Here, we'll have to measure the island diameter and the circulating width. We'll measure the island diameter from the outermost edge of the island, like this. And since this is a perfect circle, it should be the same across each of the direction. We'll do the same for the circulating road width. And again, input it into the appropriate places. And that's the roundabout tab done. Moving on, we'll also have to put in the speed for the vehicles in the model. 
We can do this in the vehicle movement data tab. In WA, we can use the Mayro's road information mapping system to check this information, which is what I'm doing now. This can take a while to load sometime, so it's also helpful to just jump on Google Street View and have a look there. But as you can see, our intersection is the grey, which is 50 km per hour. So just go ahead and input that. A quick tip would be to use the quick input function, select all legs, so that you don't have to type it in for every single leg. You can see that 50 km per hour has been applied for the approach cruise speed in every single leg. We'll do the same for the exit. The next thing we need to do is to tell Sidra how many cars will be using this intersection. Hopefully there's some publicly available information for your intersection. If not, you can always drive to the site, bring a chair out and just sit there and count the cars yourself. In WA, we're lucky enough to have Mayro's traffic map, which have counts at many locations. This is what I will be using. So I'll just pan to the side that we're modeling. So as we can see here, there's a video survey from November 2019. Depending on the project, sometimes we might need to do more recent video survey ourselves. But for this video, I'll just be using this. So the survey file usually comes in Excel format and it shows the area of the site and the camera location. The diagram tab is useful as it summarizes the hourly volume as well as the peak. There's also raw data included in case you need to do more analysis. For us, we'll just be using the summarized diagram tab. Now you may notice that there are four movements per leg in the diagram and we only have three. That's because we haven't included the U-turn. So we go ahead to movement definition and just turn on the U-turn movement for each of the leg. Next, we'll also have to assign this movement to the lane. And since we only have one lane, we just have to turn it on. And now you'll be able to input the U-turn volume as well. So there are a few data methods that you can use for the volume. You can put in a separate vehicle classes, or you can use total and heavy vehicles, but for us, we'll use the total and heavy vehicle percentage as it matches what we have in the survey file. So we go ahead and start inputting the volume for each leg and each movement. When you use the total and percentage method, you can't put in zero, so we just put in 0 0.1 and we go ahead and do this for each leg. Normally, we'll be doing both AM and PM scenario, but for this video purposes, we'll just do the AM scenario. Now because this is just the AM volume, I want to be very clear, so I'll just add a base AM in the site name. Now, we are very close to processing, but I just want to put a pause and mention a quick disclaimer. I'm leaving out a very important step here, which is to apply any standard values and setting based on the modeling guideline that you have in your area. This will vary from state to state and country to country. If you're doing this on a project, please make sure you do this. Otherwise, your client may not accept your analysis nor recommendation. But for demonstration purposes, we'll just continue without this step. Now let's go ahead and hit process on our site. The green would mean that the site has successfully been processed, but we can always double check the diagnostic message for any error. So process, we are good. So now let's have a look at the movement summary under the site report. So the key metric we look at is called the degree of saturation or DOS. This is the demand divided by capacity. Any value above one would mean that the intersection is under pressure. Below one would mean that there's still capacity in this end section to service additional demand. We also look at the level of service, which goes from LOS A to LOS F, with F being the worst. This is a function of delay. As we can see, there are mainly LOS A and Bs in this intersection, meaning that the delay is good. According to this table, on average, you will only experience less than 10 second delay in going through this intersection. And there you have it, an existing base model and its performance now, or in 2019. This is great and all, but not particularly useful. 
Normally, the purpose of modeling would be to see if this intersection is going to continue to perform adequately in the future. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to model future scenario and option testing. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful. Bye bye.